So there was a mix of historic objects and Native American Nicolaino objects. There was a bone harpoon, and it's a distinctive type of harpoon that's known as a toggling harpoon, and it is not a Nicolaino toggling harpoon. Since I've worked in Alaska, I know a lot about Alaskan hunting technologies. It was very clearly from Alaska, one of the coastal tribes, and that was an extraordinary moment for me. I had this link from working in Alaska and the Channel Islands. We've known for years that Aleuts and Koniak peoples were brought down by the Russians to hunt sea otters. So what we would expect Southern California, Los Angeles, and the Channel Islands to be during the late 1800s, people from all over the world coming together for economy, for society, and so on. In the early days of archaeology or antiquarianism, there were several of these toggling harpoons picked up, and they're now in museum collections. But not one of them had ever come from a known site. And here we had, in boxes, Russian artifacts with European goods and Nicolaino material. So that was, a, I mean, truly a, one of those very rare moments of discovery that I can count maybe on one hand that have happened in my career. So now the big question is, who stashed these redwood boxes so long ago? Well, if you just look at the stuff in the boxes themselves, there was a pipe with a wad of tobacco that was smoked in the pipe. There were basic implements for hunting. 200 plus artifacts. We think it's quite probable that those were cash boxes that were being stored and hidden, basically. If you just look at those things, then maybe you could think a hunter, a relic collector many years ago, put it in there. But when we found those baskets, we know that only a native Nicolaino can make those things. We knew that the person who made those grew up on San Nicolas Island, knew how to work with seagrass cordage, knew how to twine it in such a way and then take asphaltum to make it watertight. That was a very, very difficult thing to do. We think that the assortment of goods represents a time period probably when this individual was born. Who was born in the early 1800s? Juana Maria. Juana Maria is always in our thoughts when we're doing any type of excavation on the island at all, and especially in this case. Juana Maria, the lone woman of San Nicolas Island, or the person that was chronicled as Karana in Island of the Blue Dolphins. A person that over 100 years ago was talked about all across the world because she lived alone on San Nicolas Island for 18 years. When she was really discovered by night of her, she had cached materials around the island. You would do that too if you lived alone. You would have a place in the northwest coast where you had tools and implements and water. That's how you could survive alone. I definitely think that Juana Maria could have been the one to collect all of these items. Things that were needed, things that were her artistry, things that kind of encompassed your life as a whole. Did she smoke tobacco frequently? Or was that tobacco left merely as an offering? There were whistles there. Were these whistles for hunting? Or did she play music to keep herself occupied? There was a feeling of, this is my life all in this box, and I need to keep it safe. And so in that sense, it's not so much of a sadness, but more of a survival and a struggle, and also a deep caring for the items that you're making and you're storing for later. For somebody who is passionate about understanding the native past, this story is one of great emotion the further we went in those two days of excavation, the more and more we, well, me personally, and I'm sure the other people that were in the room could feel her presence increasing as we went. This story is very sad, obviously. But when Night of Her first surrounded her in the original accounts, what's great about it is it makes our work alive because it talks about her, what she carried. It talks about a basket she had. It talks about her making a water bottle. We found all these things in the archeological record. So it brings all of this 20 years or more of painstaking, meticulous archeological work, and it becomes real when we can see it manifested into the story of perhaps the most famous Southern California native person. <laughs>